The Northern Lights are among the most beautiful and ethereal phenomena we can see on Earth. They can appear as shimmering curtains, rays of light, or even a red glow that suffuses the sky. And this year might be one of our best chances to see them. The Sun's 11-year cycle of activity is nearing its peak. That means more dark spots on the Sun, more filaments and prominences visible through telescopes, and, if we're lucky, more northern lights. The 11-year cycle is based on the Sun's magnetic field, which goes from quiet and orderly to snappy turbulence. In areas where the Sun's magnetic field gets all twisted up, the churning of solar gases slows and dark spots, or sunspots, appear. It's most often from these spots that geomagnetic storms arise. Sunspots can spit out coronal mass ejections, gobs of ionized solar gases that escape the sun. They travel with, and even outpace, the solar wind that constantly spirals out from the sun and across the solar system. And if things line up right, those clouds of charged particles can crash right into Earth. Well, not right into. Our planet's magnetic field protects us from head-on collisions with solar material. But under the right conditions, the magnetic fields accompanying the escaping particles can connect with Earth's own magnetic field, allowing entry to our planet's upper atmosphere around the North and South Poles. In the resulting geomagnetic storm, the Sun's charged particles, mostly electrons, collide with oxygen and nitrogen molecules in the air to produce rainbow-colored lights. Green is a typical color for aurorae, produced when electrons collide with oxygen molecules at middle altitudes. The molecules separate into two excited oxygen atoms, which release a green photon after about a second. Higher up, where collisions are rarer and electrons can stay excited longer, oxygen atoms can release red photons too. Because there aren't as many oxygen molecules at those altitudes, red aurorae are more likely during geomagnetic storms, when lots of charged particles are falling into the upper atmosphere. Also, because red aurorae come from greater heights, they can be seen from farther away, making red a more likely color on the rare occasions that aurorae make their way south. Aurorae can also be colored blue or purple after particles collide with and ionize nitrogen molecules. Even when aurorae are too faint to see more than a whitish glow, photos can reveal aurorae's true colors thanks to multi-second exposures. The eye's shutter speed is 1 50th of a second, and the cones in our eyes need a minimum amount of light to perceive color. That iPhone in your pocket, on the other hand, can easily take three second exposures, capturing a good many more photons and showing their color. So how do you know when aurorae are headed your way? Aurorae are more common in the spring and fall, but storms can happen at any time when the sun is active. One way to see what's happening is go to the website of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, where they post the most recent measurement of the planetary K-index. This KP index measures disturbances in Earth's magnetic field. High latitudes can expect a chance of aurora even if the KP index is relatively low, such as 3. If you're at middle latitudes, though, you want a KP as high as 6 or 7 before you head outside. Those at southerly latitudes would need to wait for a massive geomagnetic storm, producing a maximum KP of 9. Various apps, both free and paid, offer alerts when there's a chance for aurora at your location. Just remember, Aurorae are unpredictable, and conditions can change quickly, even at high latitudes. Keep those alerts on, stay patient, and happy chasing.